Shall we have a look at some Old Hammer era Rhino painting? I guess it could be applicable to other vehicles as well. So in case any of you out there were wondering, we are talking about the Rhino tank from Warhammer 40,000, not the animal with the big horn. Now, oftentimes, that's a word I don't use very often, people like to weather their vehicles, and very often when it comes to painting and hobbying. Some people don't do it, but a lot of people do. Now, this, I think, comes across from the military modeling side of the hobby, and these techniques and painting styles have crept over onto the fantasy vehicles of Warhammer 40,000. There are lots of different ways to paint your vehicles and weather them. People can use paint brushes, they might use an airbrush, they might use a big... What's this? A mop? Has anyone ever used a mop? There's usually a core pool of painting techniques used for vehicles. Back in the day I think they used more dry brushing, but nowadays people seem to have moved over to the airbrush more and more. Some people like the realistic look on their vehicles, and some people like a more fantastical look to their vehicles. I myself seem to vary depending on what day of the week it is. Sometimes I really like my realistic military look, and other days I like some nice colourful fantasy vehicular action. Also back in the day, I think converting your vehicles was much more of a big deal than it is nowadays. That might be something to do with the fact that you could only get your basic vehicles back then, and if you wanted a variant, you would have to convert it yourself. But also they used to add lots of other exciting things, such as stowage or netting and things like that. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look at some old vehicle hobbying. Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Like this. Picture this. The year is 1988 and one of the greatest movie sequels ever made is gracing the cinema. Short Circuit 2 starring Fisher Stevens and Michael McKean. I've literally lost count of how many times I've seen this movie. Johnny Five was well and truly alive. If you actually go back and watch Short Circuit 2 now, it's sadly not very good. It's missing Steve Gutenberg for sure. And whatever did happen to him? Whilst Johnny Five was cleaning up at the box office, my friends and I were doing our best to imitate the sexy swagger of Glenn Medeiros with his hit, Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You. Every young lady in town wanted a piece of him and we had to learn his tricks. I think we failed at the haircuts, so I haven't listened to it since. So at Games Workshop, something exciting was happening. The Rhino was just being released. The first plastic vehicle kit for their new game, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. And it was amazing. It came in a box of three rhinos for the low, low cost of £10. I think three rhinos now would set you back about £75 to £100. Inflation accounted for, I think that's around two or three times the cost. I loved these little kits, and so did Games Workshop. Their expert heavy metal crew came out with a lot of different paint jobs and conversions. They also gave you some helpful pointers on how to paint and convert it yourself. The Rhino Armoured Personnel Carrier is Games Workshop's first polystyrene construction kit other than figures, and as such follows the same construction and painting principles we've discussed before. The kit is very easy to construct, and a number of variations are made possible by virtue of the component design. It's also very versatile in terms of conversion possibilities, particularly when using parts from other commercially produced kits. For those of you not familiar with kit building and painting, don't be put off if it appears to be intimidating in any way. The kit's simplicity will encourage your efforts. Following normal procedure, clean each part with a modelling knife and assemble with polystyrene cement. You can paint the Rhino very quickly and relatively easily. In fact, much more easily than a figure. 
By far, the most effective method is to employ a dry brushing technique, which will give a weathered, dusty effect. As usual for this technique, having first undercoated and base coloured your vehicle, spray paints are ideal for this, a lighter shade of the base colours can be applied. A cheap or old brush is ideal for this purpose. A lighter shade of the base colours, with the bulk of the pigment being removed from the brush with an old rag before application. The brush is lightly drawn across the surface with swift wrist movements. What pigment is left on the brush adheres to the raised parts of the model, effectively highlighting it. Pale greys and beiges produce excellent weathering effects. Guns, aerials, grills, etc. can be painted black, metallic or to choice, as can rust patches and battle damage. The most difficult aspect of the paint job will be the insignia and banners. Now, I'm sure many of you will adorn your vehicles with the utmost of care and skill. But for those of you with less time or ability, transfer sheets are included in the box. Of course, transfers from other commercially available kits can be utilised, as can Citadel's own Arcane Armorial Eagle Set. Now, while I'm painting my vehicles usually, I often have a pot of paint water. Well, it's not paint water, it's water I use to wash my brush in. And my one is an old McDonald's cup, which featured the Lego movie. Nowadays, it's completely covered in paint and you can barely make out that it once said Emmett up here. Anyway, if you look on the back where this big brown stain is here, I don't know if you can make that out there, it looks a bit like some weathering you might see on a tank. However, if you look at it in the light, let me just move my light over like that, we can catch some texture. And the texture looks like text. And it looks like it reads, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Hannah. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. The Codex Grey Rhino represents the normal colour of the Marine Rhino. Darren's version was painted with skull grey and black mix. The whole model was then given a wash of chestnut ink, which shows through the lighter grey dry brushing as rust. Further rust was then applied around rivets with chestnut ink. The exhaust, guns and grenade launchers were painted with chaos black and subtly dry brushed with mithril silver. Darren then carefully painted the insignia and banners with a fine detail brush. The camouflaged versions were painted using woodland green as a base colour with the camo stripes being added using a brown ink and bestial brown mix and orc brown and chestnut ink mix. The model was then dry brushed with a lighter tone of the beige and white. This colour scheme follows conventional US winter colour schemes used in Europe. Obviously, you will have to consider the type of planet that your Rhino will operate on, and vary your camouflage schemes accordingly. For instance, Darren has adopted a brown and black colour scheme for his own Rhino. Note the fang insignia and virtually white dry brushing, giving the vehicle a very dusty look. Sid's pre-production model was painted very quickly with an airbrush, which is ideal for subtle camouflage effects. Even if you don't own such equipment, spray cans are ideal for providing base colours on which to add further detail. A nice touch on this model is the way Sid has filled the headlight depressions with blobs of PVA glue which turn transparent when dry. Two very interesting rhinos built and painted by Games Workshop staffers Tim Pollard and Tony Cottrell involved deep delves into their plastic kit bits boxes. They added such things as chains, aerials, tools, packs, radar dishes and a variety of tools. 
the results are most effective and the paint jobs remarkably similar. A base colour of black was dry brushed with grey metallic paint and other details were then added. Kit decals provide the final touch. Of course, there are no limits to converting your Rhino. You only have to look through books on military vehicles or at kits at your local model shop for inspiration. The photos here show three variants by Bob Naismith, figure designer, artist and supremo of the Games Workshop Plastics division. They were made using bits of Rhino, bits from the bits box, figure bases, plastic shields, plasticard, milliput, rivets, aluminium tubing, various metal weapons and a fair amount of haggis and royal salute. I have no idea what royal salute is. So there you go, some old vehicle hobbying. What did you think of that? I myself really enjoy seeing those old paint schemes and styles. I love the way that the codex schemes were actually just grey and things like that and they decided to add chapter colours to rhinos as part of a way of making them different to how they should be. Whereas nowadays your chapter colours are your standard colours on a vehicle. Who do you think painted the best old hammer rhino there? I think I'm going to have to go with Darren Matthews. Darren Matthews never fails to disappoint with his painting. His blood drinkers rhino there in Codex Grey looks very good. I do love seeing some old blood drinkers. Did you ever convert a rhino vehicle back in the day? Now I've always wanted to make the old school whirlwind using the half a movement tray base thing. I think it's a 40 millimeter square base that you cut in half and make a rocket launcher with. Instead of the uh, six Crayola crayons stuck together on the side. Do you think people kit bash or modify their kits more now or back in the day? Now I think maybe they did kit bash them more back in the day. Nowadays when people are kit bashing and things it's normally for some sort of nice painted piece as opposed to an actual piece for use in a game. You can normally buy your game piece, you know your Rhino variant, but back in the day you would have had to conserve our burly. Hmm you would have had to convert it. So the conversions nowadays on vehicles seem to be more just adding some character or something like that, maybe even making some sort of diorama. I don't know, I might be wrong. People may convert their vehicles more nowadays, but I don't feel they do. How do you paint your vehicles? I myself try a few different techniques. Nowadays, it's more about the pre-shading and airbrushing a glaze or filter over the top, if you will. But back in the day, I would definitely dry brush. However, I really do like a Byron over at Artist Opus's style and he has a sort of stipply dry brush method and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. You should definitely go and have a look. Here's a link. If you want to see some more Old Hammer videos, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels.